Are you a mother? And if you've been asking yourself, why is motherhood so exhausting? Today, I'm going to be diving into perhaps explaining a different explanation. Hi, my name is Yvette Rose and welcome to today's topic. I'm really looking forward to diving into this here with you today. And just briefly, for those of you who don't know me, I am best well known for having written this big book called Metaphysical Anatomy, which is a big book of 679 medical elements. And this is for the psychosomatic stress for adults. And yes, we have the kids version out now as well. Your ancestry is talking. Are you listening? So if you have kids and you want to learn a little bit more, even about your own childhood, this is going to be an invaluable resource guide. So I'm also a mom and I want to talk to you a little bit about this exhaustion that we as moms go through. It is an exhaustion that feels like it has no end. It's like a bottomless pit and you're just falling and falling and falling and it's like, where's the end? One thing that I've noticed with myself when I started to break the pattern of always being so exhausted is I realized personally for me is that, and what I saw with a lot of moms as well, is that we're too much in our masculine. We're too much in our masculine trying to take on a feminine role. Because when we're feeling like we have to fight through things, we have to fight for our space, we have to fight, 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 it's constantly pulling us into the masculine. And that is depleting the feminine as well because we actually draw our energy from the feminine state we're not biologically designed to constantly be be in the masculine state for long periods of time of course there's a dance there's a play that takes place like for example when i'm at home and i'm a mom and i'm with my husband i am so feminine you wouldn't believe it but when i'm speaking when i'm working i find myself a little bit more in the masculine so i'm kind of like you know dancing between the two but i brought this leadership like this 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 force with me into being a mom as well and it absolutely completely overwhelmed me and I even noticed that when a lot of moms are too much in their masculine their health is suffering the, the psychosomatics for women that's too much in their masculine is ovary problems reproduction problems thyroid problems breast problems and lymph node problems as well i mean just to name a few that's why you know there's so many of these ailments in here so if you want to find out what your patterns are and what you're stuck with in terms of the masculine and also just looking at what patterns needs to be balanced a little bit more that's going to be a really great reference guide because it wasn't obvious for me in the beginning I was just in do, 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 go, go, go mode. There was no time for, you know, self-care. There was no time to look after myself. And that's because I didn't have the self-worth to ask for what I needed to live a balanced life. I was trying to show competency by taking control of everything and trying to do everything myself. And yes, sometimes the support that we have is incompetent and we have to do things by ourselves. But even if we do things by ourselves, I notice that my mindset and my approach to what I'm going to do determine whether I'm in my masculine or in my feminine. If you're going to take an action as a mom, meaning like you feel, wow, I'm waking up and I'm overwhelmed. I have all these things that I have to do. Instead of getting up and thinking, I'm going to power through this, I'm going to fight through this. Because if you go through into the day with that attitude, you're going to, you are going to be in your masculine and you are going to deplete yourself a lot more than what necessary is. And if you wake up instead and go, I'm going to go, I acknowledge all these tasks that I have to do. I acknowledge my limitations and I'm okay with that. And I'm going to gracefully move through this. That made a really big difference for me. Because one thing that I've seen with moms is that sometimes we have support, but it's not the kind of support that we want or need. But why don't we do something about it? Why don't we change it? This is now where we might have a negative association with support, and that can throw you right into your masculine, because now you have to compensate for the lack of support that you have, right? So for me in the past, I hated being supported. I felt someone was trying to control me when they would support me. I felt that 
you know, suddenly I have to owe people now something when they would help me. Or people will support me, but it's not the kind of support that I need and I didn't have the worth or, or the, the self-esteem to express the kind of support that I needed. So I ended up being supported, but not in the way that I needed the support. That was a very big problem. And so the more I started to re- build my relationship with support in a healthy way, the more support actually came into my life in the way that I needed. Because if you have communication blocks, you're going to have trouble communicating what you need, of course. And that includes support as well. Because sometimes you might find that you have a lot of anger in your communication. You feel very frustrated. You feel very defensive, like snappy, right? And this is normally because of boundary failures, right? You feel that sense of anger because your boundaries are constantly being overstepped in so many different ways. And normally that's because we don't recognize what our boundaries are in the first place. Because when you have a child, man, your boundaries are restructured in a whole new different way, (laughs) completely different way. So when you feel angry, it means that your boundaries have been overstepped a long time ago. Anger means that you are in damage control mode. Now, keep in mind that, yes, I understand that anger is often needed for, you know, fight and flight situations, dangerous situations. But I'm talking now about just daily activities, daily interactions, right? So there's a complete difference there. And this is where anger, in terms of using anger to express boundaries, it can be toxic for you and for your environment as well. And anger also pulls you into the masculine. It pulls you into that state of fight. You're in the opposite of the nurturing, compassionate, you know, easygoing, feminine mom. And despite lack of support from partners, these people's behavior around you shouldn't influence how you feel in your femininity. That is your God-given right to control and to nurture and to decide, right? So despite what's going on outside of you, if you're in your masculine, it means that your focus is not within you. And I understand when we have kids, I'm a mom as well, I understand. To, to have that awareness, to have that, that self-discipline, it can sometimes be hard because life can get chaotic. I understand. And we lose ourselves in, those, in that chaos. But this is also where we move into that place of anger because you use anger subconsciously to to create that boundary, to create that space. But that's also hurting your relationship with yourself, your femininity, and also with your children and potentially even your partner as well. So anger is also a very negative, heavy, draining emotion. Right? And it keeps the body in that fight and flight state. Your nervous system is not able to regulate itself and to calm down and to find its place of centeredness and peace again. It's hard to, to find your peace when you're fighting for it. You're in the opposite frame of mind. And that's why you're always feeling that you can't have it, that you can't create it. Right? So, and of course, we have changes in our hormones as well. Oh, my God. That I go through the ringer with this as well. And I made a lot of videos about postnatal and postpartum depression as well. So if you want to check that out, please do. Because there I also talk about what I did and, and, and how I moved out of it as well. Another point also here that adds to our exhaustion is changes in brain chemistry, right? So when a child also sleeps in your room, you are biologically, instinctively always aware of that child being in your room. Right. So that means the body doesn't actually get the full rest that it wants or needs. So if you want your child to sleep with you in the room, that's okay. But make sure that at least once a week you have someone else or your partner can sleep with the child and you can take turns where you can at least have one or two nights of just peaceful, peaceful sleep and just get that rest, get that reset button pushed because it is incredibly, incredibly important. So these were just some fun facts and some things to look at from a mother's exhaustion from a different perspective. So I do hope that that helped mamas and I see you and you are doing great. And until next time, take care. So guys, there you have it. Also remember to subscribe to my channel, stay up to date. And also I have a free Mac membership website where we have so many courses up there. There's meditations, there's workshops, whatever you need, it's there. There's so many wonderful webinar replays as well that you can benefit from and also to observe and to learn from. Guys, also remember that I have written 18 books. 18, one, eight.
and one of many among them are metaphysical anatomy and psychosomatics for children so this one is a psychosomatics for adults this one is a psychosomatics for kids so these books are super popular people love it if you want to learn more about how your body works understanding messages behind it you know maybe you have that gnawing pain or maybe an ailment that's surfacing and you want to understand what is it that your body is trying to tell you guys these books are going to be absolutely invaluable to you you can find it at eventbooks.com where you will also find all my other 18 books and guys also remember to keep asking all these great questions i love to answer your questions at ask yvette where we discuss you know life conundrums and you know life challenges and just answer questions perhaps where you feel you know quite stuck in your life i would love to share my perspective with this and to help you to resolve perhaps certain pain points that you might be having in your life as well so guys remember to stay in touch there's so many great things that's happening and also something really awesome is that this book is already also in video format so imagine 679 medical elements in video format and with also with meditations and healing courses workshops master classes everything behind that in our platinum membership site so guys remember to check that out there is so many great things happening there so see you there